but there's a disconnect with this woman. There's a disconnect and she can't be herself around him in private. Now, I understand if they're out in public and he doesn't want that happening. I totally get that. I'm, I'm with that. But in the home, in the home, man, that's where you should be able to be open with your spouse and express your true, your truest thoughts, your deepest thoughts. You should be able to let, let the freak out in your home. Uh, I thought that's what brothers wanted, you know, a freak in the bed and, and the lady in the light. Um, but obviously he, he didn't want that. But I think that was something he was dealing with internally to keep up a facade, to keep up an image, not only with people outside the home, but even with her that just was not real. It wasn't true. And uh, it wasn't his reality of what he would, who he really was. And it all came out when he had the traumatic brain injury. It all came out about what he was suppressing. Uh, she was suppressing things, right? She was suppressing things and she had to withhold things of which were, were going on in her. Now, fast forward, me and this lady, we were intimate. Uh, we were sexually intimate. And uh, it was obvious to me that although she was older than me, she lacked some experience. And I'm gonna go into detail, keep it respectful, keep it gentleman like, but you know, you you can uh, you can assume what I'm talking about. She lacked some experience, although she had been married 20 plus years and she was older than me. She definitely lacked some experience, and she definitely had a lot on her bucket list that she wanted to scratch off. It got to a point, man. I'm like, well, you know. Pace yourself. Like, you want to do it here? You want to do it there? Like, I'm like, listen, man, pace yourself. So, <laughs> she had been suppressing all of that. And uh, so many of us are in that situation, man, where we are living a lie. And that's why I can't judge her or him because so many of us are in that situation. And I'll be honest, man, uh, my first marriage, I was in that situation. I would be one way with her and I would be another way with my fellas. And when that relationship ended, man, I told myself, I said, man, this, 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 uh, that kind of life don't work for me. Some brothers, I guess, can keep it up. I don't know. It don't, it don't work for me. But I was, like, I was like, whoever I connect with or whoever, you know, I marry this next time, man, I got to be myself. Uh, whoever I am around the fellas, that's who I got to be with her. And when I say be myself, it's not disrespectful. I'm always a gentleman. Uh, but I got to be with the woman who's confident, who, uh, who understands me, who knows me, and who's secure within herself, who's not easily, you know, offended or got thin skin. And, uh, you know, that, that was very important to me, but I get it. You know, I don't think my situation was, you know, to the level of this gentleman's, but hey, to each his own, who can judge, right? No one. But most of us are living those type of lives. And uh, all you're doing, man, you're hurting yourself. I can only imagine. I know when I was in that situation, that stuff was stressful. It's, it's stressful, man. It takes a lot to do that. And so I can only imagine how stressful it was on this brother to suppress so much and on her. 
uh, to suppress things, man. You know, brothers, you you gotta you know you gotta question your wife even before she's your wife, man. When y'all are just I guess pursuing one another, figuring each other out, dating, courting, you gotta ask questions and you gotta listen. Uh, a lot of y'all brothers don't know your woman, don't know what she likes, her inner freak, her inner thoughts, uh, because you don't set a stage where she's comfortable expressing that. You don't set an environment where she can express herself. Um, so you don't know. So she got all these thoughts going on in her head and she might be creeping and uh, exercising some of these thoughts, fulfilling them manifesting some of these thoughts and you would never know because you know y'all don't have that type of communication the open lines of communication you got to have that man you got to open that up before you guys get serious but if you're already involved it's never too late you know what I'm saying never too late man have those sit downs have the one, those one on one conversations in the in the quiet nobody's around no TV on no music on and just chop it up, man. Um, get to know each other all over again. It's some stuff you may not want to hear. Um, it's some stuff she may not want to hear. It's some stuff you may not be down with. And some stuff she may not be down with. But you guys can express it, talk about it, discuss it. And, you know, it may be scary for you. But there's two sides of that, man. It can make you stronger as a couple or it can reveal to you that, man, we shouldn't be together. If we're going to re really be true to ourselves, we shouldn't be together. And you may have to wish each other well and, and, and uh, separate. Or it may reveal to you that yeah, we're more alike. We have more in common than we thought. Although we've been married for so many years, we've been hiding, suppressing stuff. But now that we've let this out, damn, you were thinking what I was thinking. And uh, hey man, you, you may be surprised in that way. But that's the number one lesson was suppression, man. Now, she invited me on a trip to the Woodlands, to Houston, uh, with her. She was going to visit him. And she would visit him maybe uh, once a month or twice a month. But she would talk to him daily. Um, and those conversations were weird. When I say it was like talking to a three-year-old, man, that's that's not an understatement. He had a, he had a serious brain injury. Um yeah, he could never be alone by himself, ever. He could never cook. He could never uh, eat where there's not a mess made. He could never be in the shower or the tub alone. He could never be in the bathroom alone or in the kitchen alone. Yeah, it was it was traumatic. Man, he had to learn how to walk again. It was traumatic. So anyway, I said, yeah, I'll go because she wanted me to... Go with her. So I said I'll go. And maybe I was wrong, guys. You know, let me know in the comments. Maybe I was wrong. This is over 12 years ago. But anyway, so I went. And uh, I stayed at the hotel. Well, we stayed in the hotel. And she would go visit him during the day. And spend hours, man. I would go. I would go shop. You know, or hang out at, at a bar. Sports bar. You know, just hang out. Do my thing. Uh, maybe drive down to Houston, you know, um, make my rounds. But one night, we get a call in the middle of the night, and it's the center, the rehabilitation center, and they're having problems with him. He won't do something they're trying to get him to do. I, I can't remember what it was, but he's fighting them. He's fighting the staff. Like I said, this is a big guy, but now he has no filter. He has no ego. So he can go hard, man. Um, so they call her. 
they put him on the phone with her and the way she had to talk to him, man, was heartbreaking. 